Hey guys, Andy here. Um, can I show you some KitKat features or things you might not have realised? A few hints and tips, I suppose, in some ways. Um, I've got two devices here, both running KitKat ROMs of different kinds. So it's my Nexus 5 um, running stock KitKat, and I also have my, uh, my Galaxy S4 in its case, actually running CyanogenMod 11. So the first thing is perhaps the most obvious one that I would, I would imagine everybody knows about. We're going to tap away on the Android version number. We have the, the KitKat fonted K. We tap on that to make it spin around and then finally it drops away. And there is Android 4.4 in the KitKat style. Now, it should. There we go, I think. Now it's also turns about full screen mode. Swipe down from the top to exit full screen. As you can see the whole screen has gone to the Easter egg, but that actually shows us another feature where it goes full screen mode. We turn it OK. So if we want, we swipe down, we get the, the buttons at the bottom, and there's the notification bar coming from the top. Uh, it's a good opportunity to, uh, to see that while we're here. But going on in the background, you can see all these different icons for the previous version of Androids flying around the screen. I don't know why some of them are blank. And you can tap on them and they... Now you could try Honeycomb, look, Donuts. Someone has said if you tap them all in, in a relevant order you get another Easter egg, but to be honest I'm not sure I could keep up. Have a go, let us know if uh, you find that to be the case though. Something else had an update is the lock screen. You notice down the bottom we get a camera on one side and an arrow on the, in the middle. If we use the arrow we can go up straight away into Google Now. Oh, sorry, I wasn't talking to you. Come to that in a moment. Um, but also, quick access to the camera. So we can either press on the camera icon, you see it appearing in the side there, and I can slide in, or I can simply just slide it in. And we go straight into the camera app. Look, there's my little Google hacky sack thing. So that's quite handy for uh, for quick access from the lock screen. Um, we also in 4.4 have a new. So there's not sort of GPS settings. And they've they've all wrapped it all up in location. So we go into that, and it tells us we're in high accuracy mode, and we can change that to battery saving. Is it going to focus for me? Now, where well, you can read that battery saving, which uses just the Wi Fi and the mobile to be able to locate where the phone is, or device only, use GPS to pinpoint your location. Um, but high accuracy is use GPS, Wi Fi, and mobile networks, so it uses all of them to get the best possible lock. Um, it tells you which ones use more battery power. Um, Location reporting in this instance is off on this phone. I think because I turned it on on the other phone, but uh, normally I have that on. This next one's probably one of the better known ones. When we're on the regular home screen and we say, OK Google, will it rain tomorrow? No, rain is not expected tomorrow in London and 3 EUK. The forecast is 8 degrees and partly cloudy. OK Google. Who are the Redskins playing next? The Redskins are playing the 49ers on Tuesday at 1.40. So even converts it into my time, I like that. OK, Google. What is 48 times 73? The answer is 3,504. OK, Google. Open xda.com. Opening web page. OK, Google, do a barrel roll. OK, Google, what is the loneliest number? The loneliest number is 1. OK, Google, make me a sandwich. What? Make it yourself. Cheeky. OK, Google. Beam me up, Scotty. How can I do it, Coppin? 
I do not have the power. <laughs> anyway, I've mucked about enough with Google now. So the main the main point being you can access it from anywhere. Okay, Google on the home, the main launcher. Um, Google now itself can be accessed from a swipe from the home screen, so your leftmost home screen. Um, the one before that being the default, and then we go. Speaking of home screens, we can now change them in settings. So tap on home. I've got two different home screens installed. The stock one, which has got the little, you know, selected now, and Nova Launcher. And if I tap on Nova Launcher and I press home, all of a sudden, if you see the difference, I can't now get to Google now and OK Google obviously isn't going to work in this launcher but um, I think what could be quite handy you could have two separate launchers set up for maybe work and home different widgets different access to things um, and it's very simple now to switch between something else that's new in 4.4 is screen recording now it's really it's meant for developers it's meant to help them record videos that they might use on the Play Store to show what their app can do and things like that but obviously everyone can get access to it um, either via ADB, there's a particular command you can use um, or there is actually an app called Android 4.4 Screen Recorder now it's kind of weird because we don't get a start and a stop but we get to set a, a time limit so I'm just going to put it on for oh, I'm going the long way, I'm just going to put it on for 15 seconds Start recording, got a, a timer starts there. If I come out and then go into there's my screen protector. And then it tells me that look, recording is finished. So a bit annoying if you say, if you think it's gonna take a certain amount of time and you start recording and you run out of time, but I guess you set it for more than needed and then uh, and then edit down after. So if I switch back, because you do get to also set the save location, so I put it in the download folder. Oh actually I'm not even sure I did. Maybe it doesn't store. No, so actually I'm not sure where it's going to save that. So it doesn't save it from one use of the application to the next, but that's like I said, that's Android 4 before screen recorder could come in handy for some people. Um, just if we want to have a quick look. Now actually there's one I did, this is one I did earlier so to speak, so I set it for 30 seconds, look you see it started, This is not. I'm not doing anything that was pretty good to me not super smooth, but pretty smooth as you see look, that is still a recording, and I can pause it so that's kind of cool, that's new in 4.4. Not so popular with some people is the Hangouts app. So Hangouts now, the first time you run it, it will ask, do you want it to handle your SMS messages? I've said yes, I much prefer that way. So now you see, if it's got a little, it will textually say SMS in the corner there, if it's a, it's a text conversation rather than a Hangout conversation. Now if you've got somebody where they use Hangouts and text messages, you tap the, the drop down and it gives you the different options so you can select still to text somebody rather than send them a, um, a data you know a hangout message through data because some people although they might have the option they just don't use it they don't check it whatever it might be so you can make sure it goes as a text message still um, that moves us nicely on to the dialer now you might notice straight away there it says caller ID by Google is enabled if I tap on that it tells me that uh, we go, shows names for people and businesses not in your contacts. So basically you have a call that comes in, you receive a phone call, it will Google that number and if it can, it will put up the, if it's a company, if it's a business, it will put their business name. It displays um, graphical art, uh, you know, like a, it will Google an image for for that number. Um, now I tried, I think that was car phone warehouse, it didn't bring up anything. But the other thing is you can type in, so if I just want pizza, and it gives me pizza. If I type in phones for you, it gives me the local phones for you numbers. Um, so the, the dial is pretty cool in that respect, pretty pretty handy. 
I was quite surprised the first time I'd forgotten about that feature and I, I, I was ringing somewhere trying to get my screen fixed for my S4. I rang some random business just around the North Circular and as I sort of brought my hand away to hang up, it had, a, it had an image for the business. It was really uh, kind of surprised me, even though. One thing to be very aware of as well, if you look in. Yeah, but mind you, it's not going to help here because I have been on Wi Fi. But Wi Fi shows us permanently on. You might notice that's the case even if you think you've turned Wi Fi off. Um, in 4.4, things have changed a little bit. So if we go into Wi Fi, this is a good battery saving tip. Um, advanced. And you see it says scan always available. So that's that's new. The other other one some people talk about I don't particularly hold much stock in is keep Wi-Fi on during sleep. Some people say put it under never. Um, it saves battery. Well, Wi-Fi is more efficient than 3G or 4G or even 2G probably. So I think you're you're best to have it on all the time. But um, I've lost it again now. Scanning always available. If I turn that off, actually, can you read what it says there? Let's Google's location service and other apps scan for networks even when the Wi-Fi is off. So by having it on, you have much better location awareness of the phone because it's even when you've got Wi-Fi turned off, it's not trying to connect to any networks, but it's just checking what networks are nearby. Google's got a massive database of all the different networks. You know, for example, I connect to my Wi-Fi; it knows exactly where I am. Now the funny thing happens when I move house because it still thinks that I'm at the old location until it kind of updates its details. Um, so sometimes you know you might be sat on a tube line and you pass somebody's house that's just moved here from. Mexico and for a split second it thinks you're in Mexico then it brings you back again anyway but so by having it always on it does use up some battery because it's always checking the Wi-Fi networks around you to help locate you what it does mean is you can get a pretty accurate location if you're in a sort of urban area you get a pretty accurate location uh, on like Google Maps for example even if GPS is off you'd probably be quite surprised how accurate it can be but it does use battery so that's just one to be aware of the last thing I'm going to show you, I need my S4 for because uh, I've already done it on. Uh, oops, lazy. I've already done it on my Nexus 5. Now you can need def developer options enabled. To do that, we're going to About Phone. You scroll to the bottom and you tap on Build Number. Now it tells me no need. You're already a developer. But if not, you tap it sort of. Let's just say 10 times. I think officially it's like five, but you have to tap it a few and it'll start counting down. And that enables developer options. So we go into developer options and you see here it says select runtime. At the moment it's on use Dalvik. Um, and we're going to switch it over to use Art, the Android runtime. Reboot to change runtime from. Okay. So, what on earth does that mean? I hear you asking. Um, it's kind of how the my very basic understanding because I'm not a developer it's how the phone really sort of uh, communicates I suppose with apps and, and things running in Android um, so using Dalv or Dalvik uses the just-in-time processor JIT uh, which when someone writes an app it basically it's only partially compiled and then in the app and then the rest is dealt with on the phone as you run them or something along those lines but art, it lets you communicate directly with the phone, that you don't have to do that extra bit of processing. Therefore, when you start up applications, for example, they should open up much quicker. Uh, and generally the phone should in theory be slicker because it's all it's all going more of a direct route, it doesn't have to go through to be decoded to get to something else. Um, that's that's essentially that's what I believe it is, and I'm sure there's probably some people with better knowledge than me that might let us know in the comments exactly what it is. But hopefully, I'm roughly right, and that's a that's a general summarisation of it of it all. So once it's finally booted up, you'll then see what might be uh, might be familiar if you flash a lot of ROMs. It goes ahead and re re optimizes all of your applications basically. Um, so we're going to have to give that, that'll be uh, still only on 4 out of 218. So that's going to take a fair bit of time. So we shall come back briefly. You join me back just as it's about to finish. We're on 217 of 218. And I can tell you that has taken 14 minutes. Now it's going uh, to what's well, starting apps. Here we are on our desktop. 
Now, <laughs> here's warning number one. If you can see that. Unfortunately, WhatsApp has stopped. So WhatsApp is a known problem on the uh, run running art. It literally just isn't going to work. Simple as that. So if you're a big WhatsApp user, you don't want to do this. There are a couple of others. Let's see. It may have been updated to work with it by now. No, Titanium Backup is the other one. So again, that's probably a bigger issue for most root users. Your you, you general users, WhatsApp will be a bigger, bigger problem. But everything else should be nice and quick. Now it's hard to say you know, definitively how much quicker things open and how much quicker. But generally most people are finding things are a lot slicker, quicker. Using art. So be very careful, WhatsApp, titanium backup don't work. Hopefully um, the developers will catch up with the new Android runtime. It is, I mean, it is, art is developmental, it is, um, what's the word? It's in beta, basically, I suppose, in testing. They've put it in there as an option so the developers can start using it and they can start getting feedback on it. Uh, but it is it is only, yeah, it's, it's still in the very early stages, so it's not a necessity. It's something you might have a play with and see, see if you notice any difference. So there we go. That's just a bit of a, a look at some of the features available on KitKat. Maybe it's uh, maybe there's some new ones that you hadn't seen before. Maybe it's nothing new. If you have any others that I haven't mentioned, do uh, do post something in the comments below. My name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.